Okay, my name's Jim Clover. I'm at the Sport Clinic of Riverside, California. I'm a certified athlete trainer and I also do some lecturing and I've written a book back here, Sports Medicine Essential. This is my good friend Ellen Coleman. You introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ellen Coleman. I am a sports dietitian, certified specialist in sports dietetics. I also have written a book and I consult with Jim at the Sport Clinic. Um, one of the things that Ellen and I, we've been working together for over 25 years, which is amazing, is that um, I don't have to know anything about nutrition anymore and she doesn't have to know anything about injuries anymore. What, we, what we're at now is because we've been around so long, I played in the early 70s and we used to give salt tablets away to everybody. You got a salt right. tablet. Okay, now Ellen, salt's back. Give me yes. something. Well, basically, originally what was happening was a lot of individuals were giving athletes salt tablets without water. Not a good idea. You need water to absorb salt. Then we sort of swung the other way. Everybody started drinking a lot of water, over drinking actually. And basically, in the heat, when you sweat, you also lose sodium. The average person with a two pound loss of sweat, two pounds, loses 800 milligrams of sodium. How much is that? That's about the amount of sodium in a half a teaspoon of table salt. So you can see if you're sweating a lot over a period of time that you can incur significant sodium losses and, and one of the things that can do is make, is make you cramp, give you heat cramps. So what's the danger zone as far as that? And what's some other ways that we can tell that they're a heavy sweater? Well, you got since, the white... we, since we can't measure, I mean unless yeah. we're doing a research study, we can't measure how much sodium you're losing. So I tell people, first of all, know how much sweat you're losing each hour. Because that right there gives you an idea. If you're losing two pounds of sweat in an hour, which is on the low side, by the way, then we know you're already losing about a half a teaspoon of salt. Um, how can you tell if you lose more, more salt than the average person? Your clothes are covered with white crystals, and your sweat burns your eyes. There you go. So that's the new stuff with the salt. Now once again, my name is Jim Clover, and this is Ellen Coleman, and now what we're going to talk about now, uh, like I said, I'm with the Sport Clinic Riverside, California, and Ellen, go introduce yourself I'm again. I'm Ellen Coleman, I'm a registered dietitian, I consult with Jim at the Sport Clinic. And we're both authors of books, which you've got to buy. Now we're going to talk about some stuff that's just out there is, uh, what I, I, I tell Ellen all the time, I run into these things, and I have questions all the time. One is we're going to talk about the, the new coffee. Uh, my parents, when they were young, uh, how they got their caffeine was through coffee. Well, the kids now don't really drink the coffee like they did. So now the new coffee drink is. And explain how all this stuff, and we're not bashing anybody's brand, we're just going to explain about caffeine. Let's talk about caffeine yes. and the stuff in these things. Well, basically, these, these so-called energy drinks, ener energy actually, for a, for a drink to have energy, it needs to provide calories. Oh. So most of the so-called energy <laughs> in these is coming from the calories, generally from some form of sugar. Uh, the other thing that all energy drinks have is at least one or more stimulants, most commonly being caffeine. There can be herbal sources of caffeine, things that you may not be familiar with, things like guarana or, or cola nut or yerba mate. There are other stimulants that may show up in here. Uh, green tea extract has caffeine in it. There's another one called citrus, citrus orontium that's a stimulant that shows up in some of them. I don't believe any of these have that. But the bottom line is primarily when you're hearing energy, just think calories. And the caffeine in there, we know it's a central nervous system stimulant. Okay, two questions on that. One is, is uh, I want to talk a little bit more about caffeine because uh, I, we've have kids that they'll come to practice and they'll shoot two of uh, these drinks or two of these or two of something else. So that's one question I have for you. And then I'm also want to. They all have the the B vitamins. So yes. So that's two oh, things. That's so a good so point. Yes. do the first do okay. the caffeine first. Well, to start out with with the caffeine. The caffeine does not dehydrate people. That's a myth. No. You, you can drink. You can drink a, a diet. Cola, which is something that Jim likes to do occasionally, I do. that's fine. It's not going to cause you to lose more body water. The issue with caffeine for most athletes, especially younger athletes, is that it's a stimulant and it can make you feel like this, like you're going to jump out of your skin. And if you have too much caffeine during the day, then you don't sleep well at night, then you're not recovering from your workout, 
then you're not going to make the adaptation to training and get stronger. The other thing about energy drinks that he mentioned is the B vitamins, is that a lot of them do have B vitamins in them. Now, vitamins do not provide energy. Certain B vitamins help to convert the energy, help to convert the energy in the food we eat into energy. So, um, bread, for example, also has B vitamins. So, essentially, every time you eat a food, you're going to get, you're going to get, um, well, depending on the kind of food. But the bottom line is, generally, the foods that are high in carbohydrate are also high in the B vitamins that your body needs to metabolize the carbohydrate. So, vitamins do not give you energy. Calories give you energy. Okay. Now, one more thing with the caffeine. Can, if I take one of these and one of these and one of these, can it affect my heart? Yes, can, absolutely. That's what I meant uh, I, when I said that you can get jittery. The other thing that can happen is I mean, is you, you can, can drink enough that it's going to... Oh, absolutely. You can have, you can have a pounding, yes, a pounding, pounding heart rate. I, I talked to a trainer in the desert that said one of his athletes had two, two energy drinks. drinks. I'm not going to mention which brand. And the athlete had a rapid uncontrollably fast heart rhythm called tachycardia. They called the paramedics. They had to take him to the hospital and monitor him until his heart rate slowed down. It's very frightening for that kid.